Hello everyone and welcome to the final video of Ether Revolt Limited Review Week. So far I've covered my picks for the best commons and uncommons in each color, as well as among the artifacts, and I've given you guys a guide to the archetypes of each two color pair. In this video I'm going to be looking at the best rares and mythics of Ether Revolt. To qualify as best, these are rares and mythics I would take over every uncommon or common in the set, including the very best of them. For example, I would take every card on this list over extremely efficient removal like Fatal Push, and over really good creatures like Untethered Express, which I guess is actually a vehicle, and Treasure Keeper. I think there are 13 rares or mythics that are that powerful. Now let's get started talking about them. They're not in any specific order other than that they're by color. They're not in order by which one's the best or anything like that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with white. Um, Exquisite Archangel is... You know, I said it's not in order of anything, but I think Exquisite Archangels probably is the biggest bomb, the biggest, b best rare of all, or mythic of all of these. It's completely insane and should never be passed. A 7-mana 5-5 five, five flyer who also happens to keep you from losing the game, not just because she's big and can block effectively, but also because if you are about to lose the game, at least lose it because of life total, you get to go back up to 20 life. And that's pretty insurmountable for your opponent and limited unless they somehow have some sort of card drawing engine. And the Archangel isn't even all that easy to kill as 5 toughness puts it out of range of all but the most premium of removal spells. And yeah, she costs 7 mana, but you're definitely getting your mana's worth with this card. So yeah, a win condition that also keeps you from losing is basically the definition of a bomb. And she may be one of the best one, actually, in the whole set. Unfortunately, while white may have the best of all these rares and mythics, this is the only white rare or mythic that I can confidently say I would take over every common and uncommon in the set. So let's move on to blue. The first one to talk about there is Aether Tide Whale. While not quite on the level of the Archangel, it's pretty close. It's a big flyer, 6 mana for a 6-4 flyer, who also gives you a ton of energy. That alone would already be an incredibly good card, uh, even if it didn't do what it can do, which is also that it's basically impossible to kill because you can use 4 energy to return it to your hand. This means it can dodge auras, instants, and sorceries. The only way it can die is basically if you let it die in combat because you want to trade with something. Um, a 6-4 flyer is a huge threat, and one that refuses to die is even an even bigger threat. Yes, you do have to recast him every time, but it isn't all negative. Your opponent's using up a card and you're not, and he actually nets you 2 energy every time you do it. So if you're in a board stall and need some energy, he can actually do that for you too. Yeah, don't pass this guy. This is one of those blue rares that makes it worth it to go into blue in this format, because on the whole, blue is not that strong of a color, but this is the kind of rare that makes you want to be in it. Brawl's Expertise is the next blue card I wanted to talk about. Five mana to bounce three things is almost always going to be a good exchange for you, both in terms of mana and the board state. You pay five to bounce three things, even if they're, they cost about two each, which granted, they're probably going to cost even more. Your opponent is behind you in terms of tempo there. You paid five to make them have to pay six, and chances are you're going to make them pay a lot more than that. On top of that, it also lets you play a card with converted mana cost four or less from your hand for free, so there's no reason you shouldn't be first picking this card. Quicksmith Spy is a little less flashy than the other cards we've talked about so far, or really any of the other cards on this list, but she is a bomb in the sense that if she's allowed to remain in play, she's probably going to win you the game. Making one of your artifacts capable of just drawing you a card every time you tap it is huge, and drawing an extra card every turn for the rest of the game is a good way to win a game since you'll just outcard your opponent. You'll draw more removal, more creatures than your opponent does. She does ask that you play a decent number of artifacts, certainly, but there are lots of those around, and blue has lots of other payoffs for artifacts, too. Well, that does it for blue rares and mythics. Now let's move to black. Battle at the Bridge is, is an amazing rare. It would get close to making the list even without Improvise because it can scale up as the game goes on and deal with just about anything, and it'll be a good removal spell in the early game and in the late game while also gaining you life. The downside is that it's a clunky sorcery speed removal spell, and that's generally a problem because you don't aren't able to build your own board when you play it, but the life gain attached to this makes it so that you don't have to worry about that as much. With Improvise, it won't be hard to take down creatures at any stage of the game. Black also has another amazing card with Improvise at Mythic, and that is Herald of Anguish. Large flying demon, and that in itself can be a problem for opponents, especially because with Improvise, it won't be impossible for him to come down on turn 5. He also makes your opponent discard a card every instep, and he can use artifacts to kill or weaken creatures. He definitely asks that you play an artifact-heavy deck, but again, it's not that hard to do on Kaladesh, right? He, his discard ability is probably not as good as it could be, mostly because even if you play him on turn 5, your opponent may not have any cards in their hand. Um, but it does, even if your opponent's in top deck mode, it at least shuts down uh, combat tricks in a lot of ways anyway. You can play around them more effectively and things like that. But 
you know, if you play them on turn five, your opponent probably has a few cards in their hand, and you'll make them get into top deck mode, which is pretty ideal. Black's last amazing rare mythic is Yeheni's Expertise. The Expertise is a board sweeper of sorts, allowing you to give all creatures minus three, minus three until end of turn, and that kills a lot of creatures. On top of that, it lets you play a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand for free. The Expertises are not as good when you're in top deck mode, that's something to keep in mind, but four mana for minus three, minus three to all creatures isn't the worst rate on its own, and casting the other spell for free is just crazy. That's it for Black, now let's move to Red. Free Jam Regent is our first red card to talk about. There's a dragon in basically every set that has a first pickable bomb. In this in this set, that is Free Jam Regent. Although I have to say, he's probably the worst on this list. You know, it's a, a best list, but he's the worst on this best list. But he's still pretty great. Mostly because he's not going to be hard to cast on turn 5, thanks to Improvise. And the fact that he has double fire breathing is nice too. He can quickly end in a, end a game if an opponent can't kill him. The other red card I wanted to talk about is Quicksmith Rebel. The other Quicksmith made the list too, and Quicksmith Rebel is also very good. He turns any artifact you have into a shock, and the value from that is going to add up quickly. You can use it to kill small creatures or to dome your opponent. Either way, if your opponent can't deal with Quicksmith Rebel, they're probably going to lose the game. Now let's move on to green. The first green card I wanted to talk about is Mythic Rare Aetherwind Basker. This thing is a massive 7-7 trampler for 7, but it also provides you with a ton of energy. It can, gives you energy equal to the number of creatures you control, both when it attacks and when it enters the battlefield. It can then use that energy to get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And it has trample itself, so sometimes he can just end a game on his own because, say, you have four other creatures in play. You play him, next turn you swing. Well, that would give you five energy, actually, because he counts himself. Um, so he gets very big uh, and hard to deal with. He isn't super easy to cast with triple green, but if you have him, you should try to make it work. And if you're an energy deck... You don't even have to all use it all on him. You can use it on various other things as well, obviously. The other green card to talk about that I think is pickable for all commons and uncommons in the set is Rishkar Pima Renegade. This guy's nuts. For three mana, you get a 2-2 two -two who can put two plus one plus one counters wherever you want. That includes on himself, so you can make him a three mana 4-4, four -four, not too bad. And he gives any creatures you have with plus one plus one counters, whether they came from him or not, the ability to tap for green mana. This not only makes the creatures you have in play bigger, but makes it so you can more quickly power out your 5 and 6 drops. There are lots of plus 1 plus 1 counter synergies in Aether Revolt as well, especially in black and green, so it won't be impossible for this to be generating a ton of mana. Now let's look at the one rare mythic artifact that I would first pick over all the commons and uncommons, and that is Aether Sphere Harvester. It's a pretty powerful rare. As we already know, artifacts of Flying and Crew 1 are pretty good, and this one comes with the upside of energy and the potential for lifelink. It also doesn't hurt that it can block pretty efficiently as a 3-5 either. Now let's talk about the one multicolored card I think should be taken before all the commons and uncommons. And that is a Johnny Unyielding. Planeswalkers are usually pretty great and limited, and you'll note I don't have Tezzeret here. I think he is very good and would take him over all but the best commons and uncommons, but on Johnny Unyielding I would take over all of them. He has some pretty powerful abilities. First, he can draw you cards with his plus two, which also makes it so he can get the six loyalty pretty quickly, which is pretty hard to take down. He can also exile any creature your opponent controls, making him a pretty powerful source of unconditional removal. He may be two colors, uh, which always makes a card a little less desirable than it would be otherwise, but he benefits from being green. Green has the easiest time splashing in this format, so any deck with a green base could, in, could easily splash this guy if they wanted to. Well, everyone, that does it for this video and for my Ether Revolt limited review in general. I will talk about more of my impressions on the format in future draft videos here on my channel and in top 10 lists I will just be discussing in the, about the format in several weeks after I have gotten several drafts in. I hope everyone enjoys playing the format. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. Let me know what rare mythic you think is the best in this format in the comments. And if you want to make sure you catch future limited review as well as other great MTG content, don't forget to subscribe. Also, my videos are sponsored in part by 5colorcombo.com, a great website for you if you love magic. You can find all sorts of stuff on their site, including an app that can help you practice drafting this format on your phone. They also have a store where you can use my discount code NITZAHONE5 to get a 5% discount, so go check it out. Thanks for watching.